these, you know, these belief systems that um, millions of people found attractive, and then they use those belief systems to, you know, to start wars and mm-hmm. to commit genocide. Yeah, justification of, of uh, murder and justification of war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it just seems it seems to repeat itself. History, and and so what would you suggest? How 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 would we, um, let's say, uh, start from scratch? Let's say that I'm an alien uh, coming to this planet. I have an uh, intellect, and I'm saying, okay, I'm I'm here to learn to be a human being, and I happen to come across uh, Jeff Rasley, and uh, Jeff. You tell me what, how, how would I go about, and I'm, I'm consulting you about, uh, how do I establish my belief systems? <laughs> so, I, I would say don't. <laughs> Do not establish a belief system. Okay. So, so uh, I'm confused. Everyone else believes in something, and I want to do too. So, so how do I go about this? I do try to do is to understand what are my values and to then try to guide my life decisions and my interactions with other people um, by those values. Mm. And I think that's actually what most people do most of the time. And belief systems derail us from uh, a more uh, productive and um, humanistic way of relating to other people. If, if you'll indulge me, I'll give you an example. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so go to Manhattan or Tokyo, London, Paris, some huge uh, metropolitan area. Okay. And there you'll see thousands of people uh, on the sidewalks walking around, navigating uh, through all this pedestrian traffic. And somehow this chaos works in the sense that people are not shoving each other, pushing each other, knocking each other down. Everybody is just sort of weaving around and making progress where they're trying to get to. And that's because almost every person values their own personal space and they respect the personal space of everybody else and so you know instead of just pushing somebody out of the way we move we step aside and everybody's engaged in that respectful way of um, walking around uh, through pedestrian traffic And, Mm -hmm. and it works because they're operating on the shared value now put somebody into that mix who has a belief that walking on the right side of the sidewalk is absolutely the correct way to do that. And anyone who is not walking on the right side is wrong, and I have the right to push them out of my way. (laughs) Now you have a belief system, and that is how belief systems operate. Mm -hmm. They tell the Believer, you are right. Anybody who's not following your belief system is wrong, mm-hmm. and you are entitled to push them out of your way. It's funny. It re- reminds me of a, a Dr. Seuss uh, story called the Lorax. I believe it's the Lorax. Uh, <laughs> a guy walking south, a Lorax walking south, met a Lorax walking north, and um, it, it was just about that it was about beliefs uh, apparently it's about belief systems and each one was justified and right and thus there was no moving there was no tolerance there was no giving and uh and there was a standoff and so the next page you turn the page years years later they're still standing there facing each other and the auto piece of the auto pista the internet interstate system has been built around them. <laughs> but yeah, it's kind of clever. I, I enjoy it. But yeah, I, I think you're on to something. I kind of like it. Um, and so, and so values 
what are the greatest values that humankind, in your opinion, can take on? I think at the most basic level, it breaks down to these two. Okay. On number one, take good care of yourself. Okay. Number two, when someone else needs help and you are able to provide it, help others. And you can see this, uh, I mean, in the Judeo-Christian tradition, that's summarized in <clears throat> love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and you, know, you, you can see that sort of fundamental humanistic uh, value expressed in all sorts of uh, religious and political traditions. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the U.S., you know, our fundamental political values are freedom and equality. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so, and those sort of translate to the the, the religious uh, expression of love your neighbor as yourself, in the sense that you know loving yourself uh, would be freedom. You know, live freely, to do what you want. Mm -hmm. Of course, we want to modify that with <laughs> do it in a way that actually is uh, good for yourself. But and then equality is. You know, take care of others. You know, mm -hmm. Make sure that everybody else within uh, the community uh, has a you know a fair chance and a decent life. And a decent life. Okay. Well, this is this is good. I, I like I like this. Uh, take good care of yourself. And and um, this is a is a is a beautiful work. Uh, you raise a lot of questions, and um, and a lot of people who have very deep-seated belief systems uh, in, that happen to be based in, in fear-based uh, beliefs are probably pretty uncomfortable with your book. Uh, have, have you received uh, some pushback from your book or on the release? Um, yeah, uh, sort of. Uh, I, I had a sort of funny experience. I was invited to a, a dinner party um, which was uh, a church group uh, of Methodists, <laughs> and they were lovely, warm, friendly people. We had a, a delightful dinner. There were ten of them, and my wife and me, and the host uh, had asked me to bring a copy of the book and talk about it after dinner was over. And so I pulled the book out and said the title of the book, and this one couple who had been warm and friendly and conversational, all of a sudden got these very severe, grumpy looks on their faces. Didn't say a thing through the the conversation and discussion. And as we were wrapping up, the wife, with sort of clenched teeth, just said, "Why did you write that book?" Um, <laughs> Uh, none of the other Methodists had a problem. I mean, we, we had a really interesting discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, the pastor at the Quaker meeting that I belonged to, um, when she saw the book, she t she came up to me, told me she had uh, gotten a, a copy, and said in a in a tone of voice that had just a tiny bit of an edge to it, "I want to talk to you about your book." Um, so. I, and, and but then she hasn't, so I actually don't know what she thinks of it. Well. <laughs> but I, I lead a class uh, at the Quaker meeting, and so they they have not uh, fired me from being the class leader. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, <clears throat> here we go. Uh, for my listeners, that they they probably know that I believe in a God that is love. It's unconditional love. It's, it's actually, I'm coming from a value base. I, I value unconditional love. And in unconditional love is my connection. Because I believe, and listen to this, Jeff, that true beliefs, because it, I think that there's certain times where we can uh, make a leap of faith. I can't, I can't say that you are my brother, nor can I prove that I have a responsibility to you, but that responsibility 
is felt. What do you think of that, Jeff? Um, what I would say about what you just expressed is that what you're really describing is a value. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yes, you did. I mean, you're, you're just, you, your last statement was a, uh, a, a confession of valuing brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but that, you know, that feeling yeah. of connectedness with, with other human beings um, is is that value. I mean, that's where that value arises from. Mm-hmm. And we, so we don't need to say that, that that's a belief. Mm-hmm. But using the language of belief, you know, that's okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, what, what's really important is, you know, how do we live? Right. For our listeners, not that our listeners are really uh, in the rigid uh, format, but when you're taking a look at your beliefs, take a look at the rigidity. <laughs> if if you're rigid and full of fear even to look at your beliefs, maybe that's a sign that you should uh, visit them. No? What do you think, Jeff? Yeah. I mean, as somebody who has spent much of my life uh, engaged in what's called adventure travel, um I, adventure, you know, living with a sense of adventure is, is one of my fundamental values. And so I sort of chafe uh, against uh, basing decisions and basing how I live on fear. Uh, but, and I agree that many uh, believers grab a hold of a belief system out of a sense of fear because you know, it, it's a it's an uncomfortable place to not have solid answers. Mm-hmm. You know, does God exist? What's the meaning of life? Those deep philosophical questions. There's no answer that really works for everybody eternally, and that's why philosophy and theology continues to develop and evolve um, mm-hmm. because nobody has found the answer. Yet most of us want the answer, so we grab a hold of one set uh, of beliefs that one theologian, philosopher, religious, or political leader has set forth and say, okay, that's it. I'm going to stop. This gives me security. I've got something to stand on and feel comfortable with, and I'm not going to question any further because mm-hmm. I want that of security. Well, humanity kind of likes comfort, don't we? Yes, we do. We we also like habits and patterns. My when I wake up in the morning, my bed is nice and warm, and I'm comfortable. And a voice says, "Just stay there. It feels <laughs> really good. <laughs> don't get up." Uh-huh. But of course, another voice says, "You know, get up, get out." Confront the world, see yeah. what's happening, find out what's in the news, engage mm-hmm. with friends, uh, so on and so forth. And that that voice that says just stay in that nice, warm, comfy place, I think, is the same thing as what is the voice people are listening to when they say, okay, <clears throat> I've got it, this is what I believe in, I am going no further. Uh, belonging to a group is is similar to a belief system where we do not where we're safe from not having to think or making decisions or to make discriminations on what actions what's the next best action to make because the belief says this so I am free it's kind of like a free check of not having to go further well yeah I mean that's part of the group dynamic. Uh, a, a group which has adopted a, a particular set of beliefs, and you know, if you're in the group, everybody knows what it is that we believe in, and you know, we'll usually have some sort of ritual of reminding ourselves of what those beliefs are, and we'll have some method of making sure that <clears throat> those people who get into the group uh, agree with with our beliefs 
and then this 